we're going to do a brief overview of thermodynamics and the three variables to consider, H, S, and G, when you're doing thermodynamics problems. So the first one is enthalpy, and enthalpy refers to heat, so we use the symbol H. And it's important to know the significance of the signs of the changes in these values. So the triangle delta stands for change. So as you go through the reaction, if there is a positive delta H, that means there is a positive change in heat energy. That means our system has absorbed heat energy from the surroundings and it would be endothermic. If you were to touch a reaction that felt this endothermic, it would feel cold to you because it would be absorbing heat from you, you being the surroundings. If you have a negative delta H, that means that during the reaction there is a loss in heat energy, so it is exothermic. You are giving heat energy to the surroundings. And again, this scenario, it would feel hot to the touch because it would be giving heat to you. A lot of times when we do calorimetry in situations like this, we are taking the temperature of the water surrounding a reaction. So often when we see an exothermic reaction, you know, the surrounding water temperature would go up. In an endothermic reaction, the surrounding water temperature might go down. And we'll talk about ways to calculate uh, delta H values in another video. There's several different ways of doing that. The next thing to consider is entropy. We use the symbol S for entropy. It has to do with disorder. Um, and the natural state of the universe is that it will increase in disorder. So if you imagine you know, your room over time, it's going to get messier spontaneously um, unless someone comes along and cleans it up. So we tend to see an increase in disorder. And when you have an increase in disorder, that means your change in S is positive. So after the reaction, you have more disorder than when you started. And this is something that is energetically favorable. Uh, negative delta S means there's a decrease in disorder. So at the end of your reaction, there is less disorder than when you started. You can also think of that, in this case, it's going to be more ordered than you started. Things that affect your S value, two main things to consider are the number of particles and the state of matter. So if you uh, increase the number of particles during a reaction, then your entropy will increase. And if you do a phase change from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, you will also see an increase in entropy. I put some examples up here that we can look at really quick. Uh, you can see this combination reaction where you're having hydrogen gas and oxygen gas uh, making water vapor. You will notice that the state of matter is the same on the left and the right, but what's different is over on the left, we have three moles of particles, and over here on the right, some of them have combined together, and now we only have two moles of particles. So in this case, I have fewer particles. Um, there is less disorder, so this would have a negative delta S value. My product is more orderly than my reactants were. Um, with the uh, other example you might see is with dissolving something in water. This is an example where you tend to have a positive delta S value. Uh, you will see that they're breaking apart, they're becoming more disordered. I've got more separate particles on the right than I do on the left. So this would be a positive um, delta S value. And then the last thing, so that's our S, which is entropy. And the last thing to consider is the Gibbs free energy. And thinking about the sign here, if you have a positive delta G, um, that means that it requires an input of what we call free energy to get the reaction to go. If you have a negative delta G, there is you know, net output of energy. And in terms of the significance of this, this is very important. If you have a positive delta G, that means it's not thermodynamically favorable. It is not spontaneous. If you have a negative delta G, this is something that's thermodynamically favorable, meaning it's spontaneous. So in the case with a negative delta G, you throw your reactants in a container. When they mix, they're going to spontaneously start reacting. If it's a case of a positive delta G, in order to get them to react, you're going to have to apply some energy to it. You might have to hook up a power source to force the reaction to go. So it will not happen spontaneously. So this tells you whether or not the reaction will happen. Uh, so thinking about how they are related then, you want to look at this equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And remember, in order for reaction to occur, for it to be energetically favorable, our delta G value needs to be negative. So we want to think about how you know, these things might affect the sign of delta G. 
we will see that if your delta H is negative, so if it's exothermic and your delta S is positive, if there's an increase in disorder, um, these two things are both energetically favorable. If, you, if these two things are true, your G value will always be negative, no matter the magnitude of these values. If your delta H is positive and your delta S is negative, you'll find that delta G is always positive. So this reaction will never be spontaneous. So if you're endothermic and you're having a decrease in disorder, that reaction is not going to be spontaneous no matter what the temperature or other conditions. And then there's two other scenarios in which the favorability of the reaction depends upon the magnitude of the S and the H values and the temperature. And that would be if they were both positive or if they were both negative. So in this case, if they're both positive, we can see that having a positive delta H is not favorable. Because remember, I'm, I want G to be negative. So having a positive value here is not very favorable. Subtracting a positive value is favorable, though. So in this situation, it can, you can have a negative delta G value depending upon the magnitude of these things. And in order for this to be negative, I'm going to want, and for this scenario to be negative, I'm going to want this number to be bigger than this number. So this scenario is more likely to happen at high temperatures. And we also would say that this reaction is entropy driven because it's the delta S value that makes it energetically favorable. Being endothermic is not favorable. So that's one scenario. The other scenario, if both signs are negative, in this case, um, it's the, the negative delta H value is what's driving this reaction. So we'd say this is enthalpy driven. Because having a negative delta S is not energetically favorable. Because if we look at what would happen here, you'd be subtracting a negative number, which means you're basically at, it's like adding a positive number. So doing that isn't helping my delta G be negative. So if this reaction occurs, it's going to be because it's very exothermic, because of this negative delta H value. Uh, so this one's more likely to be favorable at lower temperatures, because that reduces the significance of this term right here and we would say that it's enthalpy driven. So that's an overview of the, the three variables and how they relate to each other in terms of thermodynamics.